is the Glass Cannon Network. about gaming. <laughs> you guys are the fucking best. What's going on, Portland? If they decide to kill us tonight, they'll do it in seconds. seconds. We will have no warning. They'll swarm over us. <laughs> also, I thought the podcast was about friendship. Well... <laughs> How is everybody doing tonight? This is, this is insane. I'm like, taking it aback? I know, I really am. Yeah. Fire codes be damned. <laughs> everybody Google this Coconut how, Grove is, when you have a second. This is how I like my crowds. Uh, oversold and overserved. Yeah! Oh man, I remember how excited I was the, uh, the first time I was to visit Portland. That was back in 2017, I think. Uh, this is my third time coming here now. Skid and I came in, it was 2017. We came for the second uh, GCP West, which was one of the first fan gatherings of the nation. Who was there at that? Good people. Uh, and then came back in 2019 when we did the fifth ever Glass Cannon Live at the Mission Theater. That is where, that is where Praise Log began. That's Praise Log. May all your logs be smooth. We got a lot of logs here tonight. <laughs> yeah, this is so appropriate. I didn't even think of it. 
This was the sacrifice necessary to bring us back. (laughs) They built us a church. They did. This is awesome. (laughs) One worthy of our religion. (laughs) And, uh, And now this is my third time here in 2022. And having seen this city change a little bit uh, over the course of my three visits. It reminds me of one of those time-lapse videos of the uh, decomposition of an animal carcass. (laughs) Have you seen these? It's where they like, they take like a corpse of a pig and they show it and fast forward like flies eating it and the bones just turning to dust in the sun. That's what I think of now here on my third visit. hell did you lawless hippies do to this place? <laughs> <laughs> Looks like a Call of Duty multiplayer map out there. <laughs> <laughs> was, was, my, <laughs> my uncle, who was at the last show, refused to come to this show because he's afraid. Well, I was walking around last night, and I imagine that was what it was like to walk around Pompeii after Vesuvius blew. (laughs) Except the volcano here just exploded tents and aggressive homeless. (laughs) Instead of lava. I did see a lot of people in the park today in that Pompeii sort of (laughs) side, sleepy. Yep. And I was like, I'm not sure if they're alive, but uh, (laughs) I'm just going to keep jogging. I just want to be clear. You guys understand Pompeii was a volcano, right? That, cu- that murdered an entire city by covering them with molten hot ash. I what know what this, I said. Is this too soon for you, Matthew? <laughs> is it too soon? <laughs> yeah. A little like sensitive about Pompeii. Pompeii. Any family members of the people of Pompeii? Think about them? those. <laughs> Sorry. No, I was, uh, Sorry. No one was sleeping. Dude. During, but it didn't cause the people of Pompeii to fall asleep. It wasn't some sort of like slumber. This isn't show. your monologue. <laughs> your monologue needs a fact check. <laughs> well, fact check fans in the audience. Fact check fans. Fact check fans. You guys know it's okay to have laws, right? <laughs> you misfits can't govern yourselves. It's a weird town. This used to be a tourist destination. The people say, honey, what should we do? We don't have a lot of money this year. Should we go to Portland or Guantanamo Bay? (laughs) Well, honey, one is a uh, refugee detention center, and the other is Guantanamo Bay. (laughs) Boom. It's a tough choice. We've all been real. Troy, we have Powell's books. Have you seen our famous bookstore? Oh, oh, so you're... The hollowed out war zone has a bookstore. Cool, I have a famous bookstore in my living room. It's called Amazon.com. <laughs> yep. No? The books are cheaper, and drifters don't wander into my bathroom to needle up. It's way better. <laughs> I like my bookstore better than your bookstore. We've all been really excited about this monologue. Yeah. <laughs> no, no. We did, we had before, we were like, you know, it is possible to come to a city and not shit on it. Yeah. No, I'm kidding. Your dying city is great. <laughs> I appreciate you taking a break from getting tattoos to come out here tonight. It's very kind of you. Very sweet. Once you start, you can't stop. <laughs> Now I'd like to introduce you to uh, four men who are exactly like Portland because they're disappointing once you meet them. (laughs) First up, coming in at four feet, 11 inches. (laughs) And 85 pounds, 20 of which is body hair. (laughs) He's our resident halfling bard. Give it up for Matthew Cavanagasa! Go on. (laughs) 
I'll have you know I checked my facts for those numbers. Uh, <laughs> I wish they were true. How is, uh, <laughs> how's dad life treating you? I wish those numbers were true. <laughs> <laughs> it's, going, it's going great. Is your, uh... I've given up on personal self-esteem and worth. <laughs> That's, that's how it's supposed to happen, right? You find happiness on the other side of your own joy. No. <laughs> Is your daughter old enough to uh, roll her eyes when you tell her you're a playwright? <laughs> <laughs> but father, what will we do for food? <laughs> how will mama and papa feed me? We shall burn the scripts of my plays for warmth. <laughs> <laughs> the unfinished scripts. <laughs> Gather around the pages. Uh, next up is someone who missed last month's show due to COVID. Aww. Yeah. Two shows. Are but, you guys uh, rooting for COVID in this situation? <laughs> it's like a pro-COVID crowd. Big COVID crowd, yeah. But thankfully, due to some experimental drugs they use on elephants, he is recovered. Uh, sadly... <laughs> We didn't have an excuse not to bring him this time. <laughs> Give it up for Grant Berger! Berger! Grant, 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 Grant. Thank you. Thank you. Grant and uh, Matthew and I flew on the same plane uh, together yesterday, and I uh, was walking up the aisle, and I saw Grant sitting in a middle seat in coach. Oh, no. And you looked like someone was stuffing three hot dogs into one bun. It was just... <laughs> you looked so uncomfortable. And I felt like it, too. Uh, Matthew offered me the aisle seat many times, but I felt like I couldn't take any more away from him than you've already stolen. <laughs> <laughs> All true. <laughs> so... Yeah, yeah, I like this town, though. It's been great. Uh, yeah. It's been fun running around. I've, I, I've been over two bridges the time I've been here. I think there's 20 more. Is that how many? Yeah. Big bridge town. Big bridge town. We saw the submarine this morning. We did see a submarine. <laughs> what is this story? Oh, well, you can't ask. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> nukes, right? Is that why no one... Okay, got it. <laughs> well, next up is a man who is right at home here in Portland because he's a weirdo that lives in a tent in Grant's backyard. <laughs> <laughs> Give it up for Skid Moore! Have you heard of this guy? Do you know Skid? Skid Moore! This fucking guy! Skid! Skid, you old draft dodger. How are you, buddy? I'm good. I feel like I'm in the, the home, the original home of the draft dodgers. <laughs> uh, I actually, I do like Portland a lot. I've been coming here since I was a little kid, and this town is great. I do, however, feel some sort of residual embarrassment because I see a gentleman in the front row who's wearing the exact same shirt as Matthew. Yes. <laughs> Ooh. Awkward. Nice he, shirt, sir. He has not finished off the ensemble look with a pretentious blazer. <laughs> Get this man a pretentious blazer. Get uh, sir, perhaps you'd be more comfortable in this. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> like it's the Friars Club. You need a jacket if you're going to wear that shirt in here. Um, finally is a specimen that we'll call, for argument's sake, a man. <laughs> His workout regimen since arriving in town has been powerlifting voodoo donuts into his Easter Island-like head. He's got a big head. Say what you will about this man, but he has the biggest heart of anyone in the Glass Cannon Network. And I mean that literally. It's gotta be huge. <laughs> From years of putting cheese and ketchup on everything. You don't need that on birthday cake. Give it up for Portland Joe O'Brien! Portland Joe! Man, this crowd is fired up! 
Oh, pumping right into my veins. I can feel it in my, I can feel it in my feelings. I know, I'm like, I'm, I'm gonna get out of hand tonight, I think. This is bad. Yeah, what is, how does Portland Joe get out of hand as opposed to other kinds of Joe? <laughs> well, you know, uh, it's louder. This, this definitely, I'm telling you, there's something creepy about the amount of people packed in here. <laughs> like I'm starting to get like a mob mentality. I'm like, yeah. let's knock something down, let's burn a car! <laughs> like, I should light a car on fire. We really should make our own city. I think we could do it. I think we could too. But we have to start by taking over another city. <laughs> and now we have the army to do it. <laughs> Here we come, Eugene. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Watch your back, Astoria. <laughs> Look out, the other Vancouver. <laughs> what, across state lines? I, uh... I've been up since 5.40 a.m. because I'm still on New York time, so I just feel like my soul is leaking out of my asshole. Yeah. I just feel horrible. For us, this show is beginning at 11.15 p.m. Yeah. yeah. It's, it's really weird. I forgot to say goodnight to my wife. Aww. She went to bed hours ago. <laughs> um, but I, 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 Joe and I went out last night and we ate 20 pounds of sushi and had 300 beers. And so during my four hours of sleep, I had some weird dreams. <laughs> I did too. Really fucking weird Sorry. dreams. <laughs> but I woke up at 5.40 and stupidly I, I went to my phone. And once I go to my phone, I'm like, it's over because that like activates my brain. But the reason I did that is because I had a dream that ended on a very strange line that for some reason I thought might be funny to analyze tonight. <laughs> oh, God. So I woke, I, the end of the dream was I was talking to some man in a suit he was like, maybe a James Bond type guy. And I, I wrote this down in my phone because it's so fucking ridiculous. Because I woke up and I know that the last thing I said to him was, uh, where is it? The sausage and murder party makes my white whistle blow. <laughs> <laughs> that was... Let's dig into this. That was his Manchurian Canada trigger phrase. <laughs> <laughs> Is it a, let's really take it to this. Is it is a sausage party and a murder party? Wait, read it again. The sausage and murder party makes my white whistle blow. <laughs> it sounds like it's a sausage and murder party combo, not separate events. Right. I agree, it's a combo party. It's a combo party. It's a bunch of murderous dudes. Are they serving sausages and murder? What's, I mean, what's the, the only thing on the menu is sausage and murder. murder. <laughs> Was I mean, it a murder mystery sausage party? I don't know. And what is my white whistle? Does the sausage cause the murder? Are they like poisonous sausages? I don't, you know, I don't know. I really want to figure this out. <laughs> so I just woke up and I was like, sausage and murder party makes my white whistle blow. <laughs> Fun drive Talk all over amongst again. your friends. <laughs> yeah, let's figure. Let's, this is going to be the whole show tonight. I really want to figure this out. <laughs> let's talk this through. What the hell did I eat? <laughs> well, I hope all of our white whistles blow after tonight. <laughs> this is going to be a wild show, and we have a curfew, so I think we should just jump right into it because I'm already yeah! sweaty. Yeah! I am ending book two of Strange Aeons tonight. Yeah! Give me that. Should give me that fucking look, Kevin Acosta. I'm doing it. It's, it's okay. not happening. It's not happening. Is that a challenge? <laughs> Your town may be a shining example of how not to run a city, but, but, <laughs> Such a dick. the niche is stronger here than anywhere. Yeah. So I probably don't even need a recap, but I'm gonna do it anyway because it kills time. <laughs> so here it is. A lot of time. Our heroes 
have been traveling through the city of Thrushmore trying to discover anything and everything they can about the leader of the area. What's his name? Damn. Perfect. Love it. Love it. Count Hazerton Lowell's the fourth. Apparently, some of them used to work for the Count in some capacity before he somehow sacrificed their minds and memories and placed them in an asylum. They come to town and the Count is gone, so eventually they break into his estate at Iris Hill to confront the woman he left in charge. Well, it turns out this woman has been abusing her power by aligning with a cult of Hastur and kidnapping and killing people all over town to try and power a portal to Carcosa so that Hastur himself, the king in yellow, can come over here to Galeria and have a blood orgy with all his blood orgy friends. A sausage murder party. Sausage, sausage, and, sausage murder and murder party. party. <laughs> Just thinking about that makes my white whistle blow. You've come to Iris Hill. You've wiped out the cultists, wiped out creatures from the beyond, and you even killed Meli Sen. So now you're scouring the rest of the main building where the Count lives to try and find out more information about where he went, where he is. At this point, you've discovered a few things. Am I boring you? No, I just needed more oxygen to my brain to get ready for the rest of the recap. Good answer. <laughs> Thank you. Pay attention to this, because there's a lot of information here. You too, especially you. <laughs> you held that unusually long. <laughs> I was trying to see how long I could hold it. At this point, you've discovered that he is working with someone named Myacnian Munn. He found alchemical receipts sent to the Count in his name, and last time in another ghost town known as St. Paul. You also found a letter from Munn that reads, and I quote, it seems that the mad poet you met in your dream journey was right. The book you seek, The Necronomicon, is located in a special collection called The Mysterium in the Kadiran city of Kathir, <laughs> though it is written in Necro. If you can find a way to retrieve it and bring it to me, I can certainly help you translate and research it. No. Yes. So now maybe you have a destination, this city of Kathir. At the mention of the mad poet, Aldo has a vision of walking through a strange dreamlike desert with other members of the party and Count Lyles himself to meet with a man who introduces himself as the mad poet. You found several books throughout the manor. One in particular full of Lowell's notes all about the dreamlands. According to his scribbles, it seems Lowell's was using dreams as a method of research, wherein he would project his consciousness into the dreamlands to meet with people and creatures there. One such person was the mad poet, who offered to show him the way to a forgotten city in return for sacrificing his assistant's minds. So did you join Laos on a journey into the dreamlands? What was this forgotten city? Did Laos get there with the mad poet's help? And, and is he now heading to Kathir? Or is he still trying to find this forgotten city? And why? You feel like you're so close. You've assembled several pieces of a disturbing puzzle that involves you, a journey into the dreamlands, Laos, his friend Myacnian Mun, and the mad poet. You just finished battling a penangolin. Do, 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 do. <laughs> You're thinking of penangonal. <laughs> this was a penangolin. Doesn't work. Penangolin was this undead floating head of a woman, her entrails dripping on the floor. You defeated her. You now find yourselves in the master bedroom. There are doors all around. There was a hallway with more doors. And as you catch your breath, Winter Claxa, who was played with great aplomb by Sidney Emanuel last month. Gotta pour a little out for Sid yeah. on Troy's book. <laughs> Though she will never be invited back, she did great. <laughs> That's 
so mean. <laughs> Next time, get the memo that says, don't make direct eye contact with me. <laughs> it's a simple rule. So Winter says, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute, wait a minute. You're all catching your breath from the battle. She's like, I, I don't know if it's this recent brush with death or, or what, but I've been thinking about Halster. When he went catatonic downstairs, we were obviously concerned for his well-being, but now I'm starting to wonder if shoving him into a sarcophagus full of live rats was the right call. <laughs> What? What is wrong? You're having doubts? Well, I'm a healer for Ferasma's sake, and usually the sarcophagus full of live rats is saved for a last, as a last resort. <laughs> no, 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 you misunderstand. The rats were meant to protect him. Yes, of course. Listen, I understand what the rat's purpose is, but I think we were being too hasty. We should go check on him and try more conventional methods, like splashing cold water on his face or <laughs> slapping him in the nuts. Yeah. Then, if nothing works, more we'll rats. try the live more rats, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Double the rats. Yes. <laughs> well, I'm concerned there may not be enough rats in the sarcophagus. That I tend to agree right. with you, Aldo. Yeah. Well, well, let's gather well, let's some... try the nut slapping and see if that's effective. We could lead with the nut slapping for sure, and then cold water. Either way, but let's in go check. In either case, I don't believe we should try for at least an hour and 40 minutes. No, I don't feel right about this. We should go, we should go immediately. And you turn to go to the door, and Halster is standing right there. Oh. Oh. And he's just brushing rats off of his cloak <laughs> that hit the floor and scurry about. <laughs> what do you say? You pieces of shit. <laughs> You're lucky that I worship the Lady of Graves and I know that every spiral needs to a new journey of self-discovery. And then a camera slowly pans inside of Halster where you see a live feed. <laughs> <laughs> I'm getting used to them. <laughs> what was it like? What was it like in the sleep of dreams? <sighs> At first it was quiet, cool, refreshing. And then little by little, I felt the smallest feet I've ever felt crawl up and down my chest. <laughs> Down my navel. They lingered there, Sir Julie. They lingered on my navel. <laughs> I thought one of them found enough purchase to sleep, but chance to dream as I had. Until they went further down. <laughs> At first, I thought they took a fortunate journey down to my kneecap. Perhaps to find my toes and then on to another place. <laughs> they did not, Sir Julie. <laughs> they took my feet as a sign to turn around. <laughs> Halster, please do not relive this. <laughs> no. I must! <laughs> If not to honor the family that lives inside of my colon at this very moment. <laughs> you have all the fun. Houser, I'm sorry. If only in our travels we had found some cheese to stick up there. But um, I'm glad you're well, and I'm sorry that I took such drastic measures and went along with your cruel friends. I think it's best that I go and uh, Agreed. Warn. Goodbye. Yes, see ya. <laughs> <laughs> There's the door. And she walks the fuck out. Right. She just leaves. Out of the open window. <laughs> There's a sarcophagus available. She's like, no, I, I, should, I should go into town and, and 
and let people know about Melisande's demise. I'll, I'll, I'll get in touch with Cecilia Rents. She's probably the only person left that can do anything in this disaster of a town. So I will go there, and then when, when, when you finish here, come and meet me at the Sleepless Detective Agency, and we will, we will see what happens next. But I, I will go and let them know so that no one else gets hurt. You're still here? <laughs> And as she describes this whole plan, and then Bungleby so rudely just like dismisses her, she just like turns to walk away, and we immediately jump her and put her in the coffin. (laughs) This is where you go! (laughs) Who are you and what have you done with Winter? (laughs) It's the rats for you, imposter. (laughs) The rats will dig the truth out of you yet. Please! I'm logic! (laughs) Leave her in there until another one of us gets COVID. (laughs) (laughs) And you push the lid shut. (laughs) (laughs) All right. What do you want to do here? Obviously, you found some information. Uh, You started scouring the room. Uh, You found that shit. There was uh, two doors in here leading south. And then back in the hallway, multiple doors. You check the first one, uh, which I am now pinging on the map. It was that first room to the east before you went west into the master bedroom. And that, excuse me, to the west, and then you went east. Whatever. It, is a, it was a child's bedroom. And then you came in here, and it was the master bedroom. But you've got multiple doors to check out. And a long hallway. What do you do? So Julie kicks in the southern door. <laughs> Get it moving. You kick down the southern door and you see a small room with a staircase leading up. I'll just move my pawn to that door. It is a... uh... (laughs) Get your head in the game, (laughs) LaValle. Playing a little sloppy like the Boston Celtics. (laughs) They just fucking won, dude. Spoilers. (laughs) <laughs> All of Portland taped the game. They <laughs> <laughs> watch their beloved Miami Heat in the playoffs. Uh, all right, so wrong door, but whatever. It's not like you weren't going to open this one. It is a staircase leading up. It's clogged with cobwebs. It's very dusty. It looks like it has not been uh, accessed in a while. That's all that you see there in that room. Now you want to go to the room that you actually meant to open? Yes. Yes. <laughs> well, Wait, that's did you fair. say going up? Yes. Holy shit. And I won't say it again. You oh. open uh, this room, and it looks like a private study. Uh, the walls are lined with fine wood panels. The furniture includes a desk sitting under a window opposite the door that you're looking through. There's a high back chair and a couple of small bookcases uh, packed tight with scrolls, volumes, and notebooks. Ooh. It, pr- it's pr- it probably is a place where the Count kept his most precious tomes and important documents. It has an air of importance, like the nice stuff was kept here. Uh, yeah, so Bungleby is just like, excuse me, and just squeezes past Sir Julie into the room, <laughs> and it's just like, yes. <laughs> and starts casing the joint for the most valuable shit to take out of here and sell on the tome black market. <laughs> Can I do a perception or an appraise check for like the most valuable stuff? Do a perception check. Uh, oh, ho, ho, hot stock! 31. Ooh, wow. Um, you see that the collection contains a wide variety of books though it seems that many of them focus on old cults and other occult lore. There's a lot going on here. Uh, Someone smarter, like every other person in the party, would look at this room and think, if you spent a lot of time here, you could probably uncover a lot of information. But it could take hours to look through. With a 31 perception, the things that jump out at you most are the two bookcases, Uh, notes scattered on the desk and a big heavy chest near the door. Uh, He goes to the chest. 
Okay, what's everybody else doing? Read the notes. All right, so Julie's going to notes. Uh, you guys want to go to the bookcases? Yeah, Aldo squeezes his strange, lanky frame past Sir Julie and starts furiously leafing through uh, everything. Okay, um, there's a lot here. Do you think you want to spend some time kind of digging into it? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you went to the chest. <laughs> you see a small <laughs> trunk. <laughs> <laughs> There's no better thing to bust Troy's chops on than pawns on roll 20. <laughs> <laughs> It's like stabbing him with a very tiny sword. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I didn't know what the hell was going on until I just looked at the map. Yeah. Uh, oops. She's in the rat sarcophagus. And where is your... There he is. Uh, he has a little rat on his character, actually, if you look. Where is he? It looks like a rat. There he oh, is. Hey! Oh, hey. Hey. hey! Welcome hey. back. Hey. All right, you went to the chest. Uh, Bungleby looks studly. It's locked. You want to try and disable it? Uh, first perception for traps, natural 20. Oh! Yeah. 20! It appears to be untrapped, but it is locked. Uh, I, well, we're going to spend hours in here. I'll take 20 on a disabled device. Okay. 39. Pop it open. It's full of books. Fuck. <laughs> <laughs> More reading. He's got a 10 intelligence. God damn it. <laughs> it is, uh, it's loaded with books, and uh, there are a couple scrolls as well in there. But the books are uh, annotated, dog eared. Like, if you start looking through, you're spending time here. They reference each other, they're like loaded with notes. They seem very, very important to what Laos was doing. Uh, I mean, I've got all the titles of the books. It's ridiculous. Who would read this all? But I'll just give you a, 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 a sampling. Atop the Valley's Soul, Curses of the Black Lake, The Illusion of the Weeping Ones, Manual of Silence, Men and Vultures, Denizens of the Darkened Depths and Dead Sky. And it goes on and on and on. And all of them are just full of, you assume, Lowell's notes, referencing one of their dog ear. Uh, are they the writings of a madman or like the notes have like purpose and are they readable or are, is it like a bunch of nonsense in the no it looks like uh, I mean you're too stupid to figure it out but like <laughs> <laughs> someone intelligent would see it and think that it's very important to whatever Laos was trying to do um, it seems that he is he was trying to find something but you know you'd really have to spend a lot of time with this to figure it out and you are spending a lot of time but you're never going to be able to read all these books. It just seems important, like you should take it with you. Yeah. Um, okay. So you tell your friends about this. Yeah, yeah. I mean, yeah, I think that he sort of passes it over to Aldo mainly. They don't look valuable. Yeah, because Aldo is like traveling with him, with the Count and stuff. And... Okay. Meanwhile, uh, Aldo and uh, Halster go over to the bookcases. Among the printed works that you find, one thing jumps out to you. It is a slim spell book bound in red leather. And Aldo, uh, you could very quickly discern uh, that it contains the following spells. Okay. Blindness, deafness. Ooh. Dancing lights. Detect thoughts. Eagle's splendor. Expeditious retreat. Gust of wind, hypnotism, illusory wall, mirror image, owl's wisdom, protection from good, and shield. Ooh. If okay. only you had a wizard. Yeah, no one in this current party in makeup party. can use any of that, so let's just burn yeah. the spell. He tosses it right out the window. Right out the window, and it lands. The bungalbee wraps it carefully in the fire. <laughs> it's like, I'll give this to that rat I don't know at all. <laughs> Stupid game. Sir Julie says, what is this black magic? And burns it. (laughs) (laughs) 
Just like your plays. <laughs> no, he said it before. He yeah, said it. it's a callback. Yeah, it's a callback it's, joke. It's different when I say it, Grant. <laughs> <laughs> I'd never burn one of your plays, Matthew. I'd rather die of hypothermia first. Thanks. Question. It's a waste of matches. I have a... a can I ask a... a, a, a Grant, man, hold on a second. Yes. You're dying. <laughs> dying. <laughs> And the doctor's there, and it's like, I've got it. The medicine. But you have to burn this play that Matthew wrote. You're telling me. You'd be like, no. I'll die. What are the chances of Matthew finding out about it? 100%. I'd die. <laughs> Let's be clear. I've written some pretty bad plays. <laughs> <laughs> can I ask a can I ask a maintenance question though? A mechanics. Sure. Uh, I have a ability score drain five uh, and a negative uh, level. Uh, House during this time probably would have prayed and prepared when the rats entered him. Um, <laughs> restoration lesser several times to heal himself for that, and I'm happy to roll that on stage now to figure that out. But the negative level, do I get a save against it? What's uh, going on? There? Twenty-four hours haven't passed yet because I think you went cataton. I can't remember. I, I don't think I it, got the negative levels in the strain prior to going catatonic. Obviously, I don't know how much longer. Right, and then they rested before they went downstairs. So yeah, I do need you to uh, roll uh, to see if it's going to be permanent. But you. You have restoration that you can cast, or lesser restoration? Lesser. I have lesser restoration for the ability score drain. Uh, obviously, if I had full restoration, I'd get rid of those negative levels. Uh, I can cast guidance on myself to help with like one of my rolls. All right, so cast Plus lesser one. to try and fix the Okay, so I'm going to do it twice, because I have to do it, it uh, mathematically. That is a one on the first one. The second one is oh, a... Hold on a second. Are you dealing with damage or drain? Drain. Oh, that just goes away, right? Lesser restoration does not cure drain. Oh, shit. I'm pretty sure. It's just damage. Really? I have some damage if you wanted to take care of that for me. Whoa. <laughs> <laughs> uh, before you put that away. <laughs> just don't be hasty. Um, all right. Well, well, you heal one point, you asshole. <laughs> I'm trying to remember what gave you the... Uh, the uh, Negative level? Yeah, the negative level. I think it was uh, the thing that came out of the wall in the basement, maybe? No. No. Oh, the man, the man in the roly-poly coat? The man in the roly poly coat, or was it the dental? Yeah, hallway the, with the, the yellow artwork? sign guy. The, keeper of the yellow sign. The keeper of the yellow John. Keeper of the yellow John, right. You could also just say it's gone. <laughs> oh, you'd like Cleansed that, Cleansed by the vermin's <laughs> touch. <laughs> Cleansed by the vermin's touch, yeah. Uh, all right, so give me a fortitude save. To fortitude. See if it's, see if it's permanent. All right. I also I, believe you can't use guidance on this, I think. Can I cast... Because uh, it represents like 24 hours of time. Can I cast Bear's Endurance to give myself a boost or no? Because it's 24 hours of time. Again, it's GM call, but I don't think that it's usually you can't because it's representing a lot of time, not like an instant Grant, it's time. you. You're going to be fine. You're going to uh, roll... Don't put that. Don't put that. You're going to roll a natural 20. Just, we're all counting on you. God damn it, Matthew. <laughs> <laughs> natural 20. Oh! Unbelievable! <laughs> I'm back, baby! Yeah. What did they put in that elephant medicine? <laughs> Unbelievable. When you said that, I had the funniest image in my head of them shooting it into him with a gun the size of a sniper <laughs> rifle. It's like, all right, stand back! <laughs> Shoot! <laughs> Careful, he may buck! <laughs> Uh, <laughs> all right, so you've got the drain, but you the negative level isn't permanent, which is great. Great. Um, and drain just goes away. How do we heal it with? Restoration. Full yes. blown. Full, full. Full effing blown. Yeah. Rest full show. frontal restoration. It's full. too. <laughs> it's too bad we took a, a, a cleric and shoved her in a sarcophagus full of rats. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She had the ability. Uh, you guys are still looking at the bookcases. Uh, the spell book is the first thing that jumps out at you. And then you start, uh, maybe a couple hours in, you find uh, a notebook that holds uh, an account of Lowell's interviews with Alvar Zandalus. 
Oh. oh praise, praise. Praise, praise, praise. praise, praise, praise. Words didn't fail. Evidently not, Matthew. <laughs> Evidently not. Uh, this obviously took place in Briarstone Asylum, where book one uh, took place. Uh, though Zandalus was mute, it appears Lyles would interview him while he drew charcoal drawings of a mysterious city. <laughs> and during the process, details would emerge, which Lyles would then interpret. In later interviews, it seems that Count Lyles made use of magic to read the man's thoughts, where he could not speak. And throughout this process, Lyles was able to learn about a distant lost city in some nameless desert that reportedly featured three star stelae, identical in shape and arrangement to those in Thrushmore. <laughs> in the last pages of the notebook, Lyles stops relating what he learned from his interviews with Zandalus and begins writing with maniacal fervor about his obsession with the city and his belief that its discovery alone can repair his academic reputation. So you've learned now that the star stelae were put here like before the dawn of man by these alien entities known as flying polyps that would just go around claiming worlds as their own. So they came by and then there was an evasion from the elder things and there was a big war and they ended up uh, getting killed by the serpent folk uh, in the age of serpents. Uh, and the elder things stayed down and they were like watching and then you killed them. So apparently the polyps left three more stelae someplace else. And Laos thinks that finding them would be uh, a game changer. This is unbelievable. Like, I didn't... I don't know why I didn't think of this before. Maybe I'm... I know I'm dumb, but I guess... I don't know if all you guys are on top of this. That, like, this is where we're going. Like, book yeah. three is going to be in freaking Kathir and Kadira and shit. Yeah. I, that's that's what, amazing. I, I am super... Yeah, because Troy said, you're, you're going to love, like, what happens yeah, in book three. Yeah, he keeps saying, he's like, you have no idea what's going to happen. And now, yeah. It's not how But I, I'm dumber than you because you saying that is when I realized it. <laughs> so... Yeah, I think that that's what's going to happen, and that's so amazing. It's going to really become cool. a, like a desert adventure. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. yeah. You have no... You have no idea what's about to happen. I don't know, but... <laughs> we must go. So, Julie. Yes. You are looking at the notes on the desk. I am. Can you read? Yes. Okay. You begin looking through the notes. With gusto. <laughs> You begin looking at the notes, <laughs> and uh, you're, you're leafing through, reading about uh, Lyle's, uh, his plans, it seems, where he wants to go. And so one thing that really jumps out at you is an annotated map that shows Lake and Carthen Ooh. and the lands to the south of uh, Ustalav. And it looks like the Count has drawn a route from Thrushmore to a port city known as Xer, X-E-R. And you see that he traced a line down the Selen River to a city known as Casimir. There's that name again. And then he marked a line along the coast all the way to Kathir. It seems like from there, he means to mount an expedition to a city that is written in his handwriting called Neruzaven. Perhaps this is this lost city that he seeks. And then the pages explode. Everybody roll a reflex save. <laughs> wait, seriously? So Julie, wait, boom! <laughs> really? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> she read him with fervor. Gusto. Gusto. Uh, uh, yeah. Did What did everybody get starting with Aldo? Your dex is back, right? Yeah. Uh, didn't help, though. F uh, 15. Okay. Uh, Halster? 16. 15. Oh, man. Low rolls. Low rolls tonight. Bungleby Luna? 27. <laughs> Halfling. Halfling. What about Sir Julie Andrews? Six. Ooh. 
man. She was right there. <laughs> so you're going to take 6d6 damage, Sergio. Oh. Holy. And your evasionless friends will take half that. Uh, that's going to be 27 points of damage, Sergio. <laughs> oh, my God. What were the pages made of? Uh, your plays. Grenades. <laughs> <laughs> so you would call my plays explosive? <laughs> the, lost, the lost works of Matthew Capita Casabo! <laughs> uh, the rest of you take 13 points of damage unless you have uh, evasion, which I'm assuming Uncle P does. Yes, he backflips out of the way, takes no damage. Right. <laughs> Pushes Halster towards the explosion. <laughs> He ducks behind Alster, uses him as a shield. Alster involuntarily channels immediately after being hit with it and heals everyone for seven points. So nice. take some of that back. The last thing you see there of what's left of the Thank charred you. documents uh, is a is like a little piece of parchment scribbled on it, like a draft of the equipment, supplies, and number of servants the cl- Count plans to purchase for this final leg of the expedition from Kathir to Neruzavan. So it appears the count is heading south. And that's over a thousand miles away. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Zer is or Kathir? Uh, Kathir yeah. and Casimir. Casimir is a thousand miles from uh, Threshmore. Wow, that's amazing. Okay. <laughs> Woo! So... Yeah, a lot of juicy stuff in this room, and more pieces of the puzzle are being revealed. You've got some more rooms, and you've also found a staircase leading up. What do you want to do? Uh, I want to go to the room to the northwest that we haven't explored. The room to the north. (laughs) All right, so you go back into the hallway and you begin heading towards that second door on the west? Yes. All right, put yourselves on the map and show me. Uh, perception for check. You. Four traps. Uh, that is a 20, uh, sorry, yeah, 32. It appears to be untrapped. Uh, he will try to open it. It opens. Squeakily. <laughs> Please don't be a small room. Please don't be a small room. Please be just one big room. Please be just one room. It is... A medium-sized room. It's half the... It's half the... God damn it! Oh, no. Uh, (laughs) You see two beds, a writing desk, and a cabinet making up this rather quaint guest bedroom. Aldo, where are you standing? Oh, no. Don't ask me that. Uh, I'm standing behind uh, Bungleby's at the door. Sir Julie is uh, behind him, and I'm behind Sir Julie. Okay. All right, so what do you guys do? Do you head into the room? (laughs) I don't know. I don't. Bungleby turns to Aldo and just goes, Would you (laughs) like to enter? All right. Aldo's not metagamey, so he's going to just like, uh, No, right, friends? No, best friend, he turns back to Halster and just kind of slides back. And he, like, he, he pats Halster on the shoulder and leans in. It's just like, I am sorry about the rats. I did, I did really want to put more in there. I was voted down. He pats him again. And he moves past Bungleby into the room. The reason I asked where you were standing is because as you start to go up this hallway... Something feels intensely familiar about this place, this hallway, this door to you. To me? Halster, you're feeling it as well. You're just like, I've been here before. Oh. And so, Aldo, you walk past Sir Julie and walk past Bungleby into the door. And as you step into the room, you're transported somewhere in, in, your, in your mind's eye to a memory. And you you find yourself in the bed that is to the south. It's dark, it's nighttime. It's only moonlight coming in from the window. And you wake up with a start, with like sweat beads dripping down your face. And, and you're, you're panicked. But you also get the feeling you're not alone in this room. You 
try to crane your head to the right to look at the bed across from you, but you have sleep paralysis. So oh, you're all, no. no! No! Which I know is one of Skid's fears. It is. And I talked with Harry, our videographer, about this for like three hours on our trip from Milwaukee to St. Paul. We both freaked each other out so much, and now it's all coming back That's again. why I'm... That's it was I'm very using. disturbing. Yeah. Uh, you're, you try to crane your head, and all you can see is that there is a rat sleeping in the bed to the north. What did I ever do to deserve this, he shouts in his mind. <laughs> <laughs> At the foot of the rat's bed is a handful of other bodies stretched out on uh, small mattresses on the floor, and they all appear to be asleep, but you are stuck in that awful feeling of sleep paralysis where you're just like trying to shake yourself out of it, and as you're trying to shake yourself to wake up, you look at the foot of the bed, and a small hand comes up. No, come on! Don't do that! Small hand followed by another small hand that grips the sheets and then pulls itself up. Uh, and you see the body of a small child. No, not a child! No! no. And you're just Kill like, it! You're like, Dan, it. you're like Danny Torrance when he's in the uh, cupboards. Just yes. Like, <laughs> Froze, uh, foaming at the mouth. You're, you're frozen in fear as this sleep paralysis takes hold, and this young girl just claws her way slowly up your chest. Oh, no, no! And then she lifts her head up, and you realize it's the Duchess, Lady Sheila, looking no. at you. But she's different. Her skin is, is white with black stains and she opens her mouth to reveal rotting teeth oh. inside. But she opens her mouth and continues to open it so wide that her jaw detaches from her head and just falls onto her chest. Oh. Black bile spilling out of her mouth, dripping in from the open wound on her neck. And you're just trying to wake up, but you're still unable to move. You try to move, you try to shake out, you try to scream, but the paralysis, paralysis prevents it. And the power of the memory is so great, the rest of you in the room watch as Aldo is practically thrown from his feet backwards into the hallway. And you wake up back with your friends. Well, now I know what I'll be dreaming about tonight. <laughs> <laughs> this sucks. Yeah. <laughs> what do you do? Uh, I think first he rolls a will save. <laughs> that was awful. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Aldo, yeah, he like flies backwards out of the room and like slams against the other, the outer, uh, the other wall and like slides down. He's like, <sighs> and he's like breathing, like hyperventilating and sweating. And he's like, he's like holding his head where it hit the wall. And he's like, <sighs> that was awful. What, what happened? I thought, a trap. Are no, you all right? I don't know, it's like some a dream or a vision or something, something horrible. Some, someone from my past and that was, that was not good. And he just kind of like pulls himself up. And he's like, I don't think you want to go in there. No, I don't think I do. <laughs> On to the next. I know no fear. And Sir Julie bursts into no, the Sir Julie, wait. Yeah. I will Sir inform you of fear. <laughs> Let me teach you. <laughs> I cannot learn fear. Oh, no. <laughs> All right, then. <laughs> Carry on. My mind is impervious to your lessons. <laughs> so, Julie, you walk in, and you don't recognize this place at all. Um, you don't feel creeped out at all. Um, but you look at Aldo and Halster, and you see that they're... They're affected by this place. They know this place. They used to be in this place and sleep in this place. Wow. Did Halster have the same vision or was it only Aldo's? No, it was only Aldo. Okay. Aldo remembers sleeping in that bed and having this. So I nightmare. saw the others in this room. You saw Atticus, apparently, and some other bodies that were laying on the floor. You couldn't quite make them out because you were frozen. You Did I see Halster in there too? Halster wasn't in there. No. Okay. But Halster, you recognized the room. Right. Oh. You saw a hulking. Badass orc. 
on the floor. For a brief moment, you were like, that guy is so fucking ripped. <laughs> Can't wait to beat that guy. Adventure with him for years on end. <laughs> for years we shall adventure. <laughs> you did not see that. Oh, well. <laughs> it seems fine in here. Halster, would you like to join me? Uh, all right. Come and know no fear with me. Halster stands next to Sir Julie and slides his hand onto the small of her back. <laughs> She slaps it away. <laughs> There's a time and place, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry if I crossed a line. You did, yes, thank you. For <laughs> <laughs> you I appreciate your apology. <laughs> you totally did. <laughs> That's exactly what happened. <laughs> Uh, th this doesn't seem so bad after the place I just came back from, so I don't see what the big deal is. I want to keep role-playing this. Let's see where it goes. There's two beds there. Let's get weird. What do you guys do in this empty room? We, I search it. You search it. Uh, you find a small stash of treasure oh. in a drawer. In a drawer. 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 Sorry, just had a little... Portland Stroke. Um, <laughs> that's what they call it, the street, a Portland Stroke. Small stash of treasure in a drawer in the nightstand. <laughs> Fuck that word. <laughs> it's a pesky one. The drawer, it still sounds weird, contains a pouch with 720 gold pieces. Oh, oh hell yeah. That is a significant treasure. A king's ransom. There is a pearl of power, second level. Ooh. Ooh. There is an oil of silence that you can use for sex lube. <laughs> Why? If you want to do it in secret. Right. Perhaps you're a loud lover. If you want to bang at your parents' house. But, but, that's right. <laughs> Visit your parents' Thanksgiving weekend. <laughs> just you slap a little oil of silence on yeah, your dog. It's, it's only the fear of cot that gets me going, though, Troy. <laughs> right? What's Am the I radius the on that silence? <laughs> I think you need to... Let's, let's, let's stop everything and go back and read the rules of silence. <laughs> <laughs> I believe some people get a will save. <laughs> it's true. It's true. Was, that, was that the sound of jackhammering? <laughs> <laughs> There's also a stone of alarm. Oh. Which is less sexy. Let's see what it does. Stone of alarm. Uh, this stone cube, when given the command word, affixes itself to any object. If that object is touched thereafter by anyone who does not first speak that same command word, the stone emits a piercing screech for one hour that can be heard up to a quarter mile away. Wow. What's not sexy about that? Depends how you use that stone <laughs> and its size. <laughs> what do you think, the next room? Yes, please. We take all that stuff. We take all that Sir Julie puts it in her satchel. Uh, we take all that stuff, yeah. And then he'll go to the next door and, again, check for traps. Natural 20. Oh, wow. It's blinking. Wow. Halster, Halster and Aldo, just uneasy feeling. And Halster, as you approach this room, you feel uh, like a pit in your stomach. And you open the door to this room. And a couple things are going to happen. Oh, no. 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 He said it. He said the line. <laughs> Is that your Jim Gaffigan? <laughs> First thing you notice. <laughs> First thing you notice, you open the door and you're just like, whoa, the fuck? It stinks of vinegar in there. Vinegar? There's a strong smell of vinegar hanging in the air in this simple but well-appointed bedroom. In addition to the two beds, writing desks, and cabinets, you see that the room holds a wooden vat of vinegar. It must be vinegar, because it reeks of vinegar. I will give you 
I will bet everyone at this table five American dollars that it's not vinegar. <laughs> I'll take that bet. You, you're excluded. I'll take that bet. <laughs> <All right. laughs> it looks like a guest bedroom, like the ones you've seen before as you've been searching the upper floors. It's well furnished and reasonably tidy, but it suffers the same state of neglect as the rest of the manor. But Halster, as you peer past your ugly friends, there is something it's true. It's incredibly true. familiar about this room. And as you look in, you feel the brand on the back of your neck start to burn and your eyes roll up in your head. And suddenly the room goes dark and you're standing in it. But it's a different place and a different time. It is also night like Aldo's vision, but you're standing now on the far side of the room where the window is, looking out in the dark at the courtyard below, and you're just scanning the area. And as you scan across, you see a figure wearing an executioner's hood. <laughs> and he just slowly raises his hand oh my God. and points at you. And as he points at you, you look down at yourself and then you look over to the bed next to you and see an old woman lying in that bed. And you look over to the other bed and see a figure with its back to you. And then you look on the floor and you see lying on a straw mattress a huge tattoo-covered full orc. <laughs> the orc, however, looks particularly frail and fragile. <laughs> As you adjust your eyes to the dark, you're not sure, but there's a wet stain on his crotch <laughs> that you can only imagine is urine from having piss in his sleep or perhaps semen from a wet dream. The only word Halster has the courage to say in this moment is, Do you even lift, bro? <laughs> and then you look back outside, and that executioner is now inches away from the glass oh, in front God. of you. Oh, God. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> and you're pulled out of that, and you fall backwards as well and just faint to the floor. And as Aldo faints to the floor, you look in the room, and there are figures lying on the bed. Whoa. What? Oh shit! And the real oh, there is a decapitated body on the bed to the north, and on the other bed is the lower half of a woman's body. Oh no, no! Uh, laid out in the same manner, oh. ending right at the waist. Oh. We're having fun. <laughs> what do you do? Save them. <laughs> <laughs> I think this might require an advanced form of healing. I've yet to master, Sir Julie. <laughs> Give me a knowledge religion, Julie and Halster, if you have it. 17. What's the points in religion, bro? Plus seven. Put more. 16. I rolled a nine. Paladin. You don't know. You don't know what's going on here, um, but you do know you fought a floating head, yeah. and you fought the upper torso of a woman. So perhaps the Penangalen and the Menangala, uh, or Menanga, uh, the fuck they're called. <laughs> this is these are their other parts, oh. uh, but because you have killed them, these parts just lie dormant. So you inert, think, inert. Could we? Could we? Enact a ritual to create our own pandemic. Don't be line. weird. Stop being weird. <laughs> You're going to do weird stuff. <laughs> you think that... <laughs> you think that there's probably some sort of process they were going through where they would come and reattach themselves and then just go fuck off all day and then come back here and detach. Oh. And maybe the vinegar was involved in this oh, process. Oh, yeah. man. You got to pickle the internal organs and something. You really do. Outside. It's like a weird vinegary constructicons. 
So... Search the room. Searching the room, uh, one of the bedside tables holds half a dozen empty glass files and a notebook. The first thing you notice in the notebook is a list of names. Ah. Aldo, Halster, Burl, Carthamalosword, Atticus Grimm. The list goes on. It quickly becomes obvious that once again you are reading one of Lowell's notebooks. Same handwriting that you've seen throughout. As you flip through, you see a lengthy series of notes about his suspicion that Oliver Zandalus was the key to discovering some place called Neruzavin. There's the, that name again, a lost city in Kazmaron that apparently holds three star stelae similar to those in Thrushmore. The last entries in the notebook detail all of those of you who woke up in the asylum, identified by name, along with accurate data about race, gender, height, and weight, all of which the Count referred to when administering the exact dose of a special sleeping drug, which these files must have contained, drugs provided by someone named Myacnian Munn. So what do you think's happening here before I tell you? The Count found all those people and then made the deal with the Mad Poet to sacrifice their minds in exchange for information about Necronomicon or, where, or, or this city or city. something that's yeah. a little hazy. And, and uh, he did it. And he used drugs to knock all of you out. Not you, Sir Julie, but Atticus, Halster, Aldo, Burl, Cartha. Drugs provided by his old buddy, Myacne and Munn. So that must have been the alchemical receipts that you saw downstairs. Oh, yeah. If you do a detect magic on the room, uh, the <laughs> headless torso is clad in a uh, magical vestment known as a mnemonic vestment, as well as a chain shirt. And the cabinet near her bed holds two scrolls of sepia snake sigil, the thing that oh. fucked you up. Look away. A scroll of sea invisibility. A composite short bow plus three strength. <gasps> oh. oh. Wow. 20 arrows, a short sword, and 329 gold pieces. Ooh. The rich get richer. I'll take that, I'll take that short bow. I thought you were going to say, I'll take those 329 gold pieces. <laughs> I'll take those. Three, I'll take that. You guys mind if I take the 329? I'm <laughs> confiscating this. <laughs> Let's talk about this mnemonic vestment. Mnemonic, mnemonic, whatever, mnemonic. Like a mnemonic device? Yes. Okay. I typed it wrong. The surface of this delicate looking blue silk robe Ooh. is adorned with tiny embossed runes across its entire surface. If the wearer is a spontaneous caster, once per day, she may use a spell slot to cast a spell from a written source, such as a scroll or spell book, as if she knew that spell. Wow. Oh, this is a crazy... We had this. Oh, before. shit. Yeah. I think it was in Raiders. Is it Raiders or Jade Reasoning? Oh, it was. It was in Raiders. Yeah. Yeah, it was. It totally was. Okay. Yeah, a little bonus spell action. Read a fight over it. I don't know. Who's Spontaneous Caster? Sir Julie, uh, but I don't think she'd replace her. No, she's us. not a spontaneous caster. I don't really yeah. care. Um, uh, oh, as you're standing there, you also notice that there is one more door to the east. To the east. Uh, okay, uh, we'll, we'll go there. Uh, perception check on that door. That Sorry. is a 27. Listening at the door. Looks like sound. a sturdy door that is unlocked and you hear nothing save for the scurrying of rats that uh -huh. fell from Houser's cloak. <laughs> uh, okay. Uh, quick check for traps is a 31 for traps. 31 for traps. No traps. He opens the door. Chiclink. You open the door and you see a large room. Nice. Nice. It looks like a sitting room. There's a large fireplace, a round table with stuffed high-back chairs around it. 
Good gaming table. Huh? Yeah. yeah. Looks like it. Remember when we used to sit around a table and game? The walls are decorated with patterned wallpaper and small paintings of the surrounding landscape. Against the walls are three large mahogany sideboards with brass candle holders. Uh, there's uh, another door to the west, uh, northwest portion of the room. Uh, and there's, there's like dead rats everywhere <laughs> that look like they've been sucked dry. Oh. They're like, their corpses are all shriveled like they've been, the blood has been let all out of them. Uh, Bungleby will start moving into the room. He wants to move toward the paintings, but he's going to do a perception for danger, seeing these weird little creatures. So he's looking sure. around to see if he picks up anybody hidden or anything. Uh, that is a 22. Yeah, no, it's just a real ominous feeling in here, like all these dead rats, and they're not the rats that scurried from uh, Halster's Cloak. They look like they've been here for a little while, like someone or something was feeding on them, but just feeding on their blood. Uh, can I examine the bite marks on them and see if I can maybe identify the creature? Um, yeah, sure. I do that. <laughs> Consider it done. <laughs> <laughs> what check would you like? Um, I'm not... What? <laughs> uh, knowledge... Fucking... Planes? Bites. Knowledge Do a heel bite, check? Knowledge bite marks. Uh, yeah, roll knowledge plane. See if it's something otherworldly. Uh, natural nine, so uh, 17. Yeah, you know, it seems like there may be some, some marks from like something that pierced it, like maybe talons, but then there's also bite marks on, on the creatures as well, on the rats, that don't look like they were made by any creature that you've seen. So perhaps something not of this world. Uh, perception around the room to see if there's anything lurking. Okay. There we go. Natural 19. There you go. Nice. There is... 31. Not. And if you open that door to the north, I'm just going to tell you it leads a staircase going down back to the room where Big P is stuffed into a closet full of shit. <laughs> <laughs> Sleeping soundly in poop. <laughs> um, can we search the room? Yes, there's nothing in there. Shall we go upstairs? Up the stairs. last room, it appears, is the attic of Iris Hill. Now, that might, there might be multiple rooms over there. You don't know. But it is the only apparent room that you can see. You've been everywhere downstairs except in the direction of where you knew the, those rats were in the well. There's no reason to go there. Uh, Bungleby is going to take one of his daggers and slit the paintings out of their frames and, like, roll them up. Okay. <laughs> Just, like, put them in a bag. You guys see this thieving halfling grab the paintings. And then... What? Do you... He's gone. What he you... won't need them. <laughs> You're right. We should move them to the Thrushmore Museum. Excellent work, Bungleby. <laughs> Is most, most certainly, Sir Julie. I'm off to the museum. <laughs> Sense motive. Sense motive. <laughs> Is Halster he and Sir Julie sharing a square? Down the hallway. <laughs> Why is Halster and Sir Julie squ sharing a square? Because you need to refresh your browser, my dear. <laughs> Thought you guys were just getting cozy. Uh, did, are we going upstairs? Is that yeah? We okay. going up? We're yeah. going up. Uh, we're going upstairs up. As we go. Ba -ba 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 -ba. Okay, so you want to go up? You say. Okay. <laughs> uh, I'll go first. Okay. Who's next? I'll follow. Anywhere you go. I will follow him. I will go third. Aldo will go third. Okay. And then uh, Halster in the rear. I will drag you to another map. Oh, no. And then I will place you gently around that map in the <laughs> order which you have put yourselves. Be gentle. Yes. <laughs> All right. Direct yourselves uh, a little bit to the right. <laughs> Have a little uh, fog of war reveal. Yeah? That'd be nice. You like that? Here it is. Boom. Boom, Boom salad. Oh. Boom salad is right. You are in the attic, and it is huge. It has a slanted ceiling, 
supported by wooden trusses, beams, and rafters. The ceiling slopes down from the highest beams in the middle to the lowest on the perimeter, where several ugly, fibrous plants sprout from clay pots, barely illuminated by a few dormer windows. The air uh, smells of dust, mold, and decay. I'd say at the, at the pointed part of the roof, it goes all the way up to 15 feet high, but then it quickly tapers down to the edges uh, to be much lower near the edges of the space. So the closest you are to the side walls, the ceiling is almost touching your head. Uh, it looks mostly clear, but there are a few boxes and crates scattered around, uh, as well as these potted plants along the outer walls. Uh, first look, doesn't seem like things of value, like a place where they're keeping things of value? No, no, no. If you open up a box, it's just like old baby clothes. (laughs) (laughs) That's exactly what's in my attic. (laughs) Aldo is going to approach the closest plant and attempt a knowledge nature check upon it. Okay. Um, There is one uh, on the far side of the room here. Uh, I will reveal some more of the map. And if you see that little window to the south, I love this music, by the way. So uh, good. <laughs> uh, there is a plant uh, sitting right in front of that window. Okay. Uh, Aldo approaches the Natalie Dormer window. Nice. And uh, looks out the window uh, briefly to see if Natalie Dormer's out there. And I'm going to do a knowledge nature check on the plants. Oh, that is a natty 15. Uh, that is a 29. Um, the most interesting thing about the plant to you is that it looks like it's being well taken care of. There's no reason this plant should uh, look as good as it does unless someone is taking constant care of it. And as Aldo moves over to that side of the room, you hear like, (laughs) Stay away. Stay away. Don't don't look at me. I look at the voice. (laughs) You're a good showman. Aldo looks in the direction of that voice and you see a figure sort of huddled towards the northern portion of the room with their back to you. And she's like, oh, what I've become. What I've become is monstrous. I am unlovable now. Do not look at me. I just wanted to bring him back. But my husband... That monster killed him when he found out about us. <laughs> oh, this is the Countess? Oh. Climbs, my lovely Climbs, was such a good man, a sweet man, a genius. More man than Laos ever was. And that sickness that we conjured to kill my husband. While it succeeded, it left its taint on me. When my changes began, when my changes began, little Hazerton, my baby, my only son, he would still come to bring me food but he would look at me so strangely as if he took satisfaction in watching what I became. That poor boy is sick. He was always sick. His morbid curiosity in my disfigurement was the only thing that kept him coming back. And now even he is gone. I just wanted to bring back my love. My beautiful climbs. He was so wise. I knew he could fix me. But my ritual failed and all that remained is that thing. That monster from beyond the stars. 
Can you hear it? Can you hear it? It keeps coming here to haunt me with its laughter, though I cannot see it. And as she says that, you hear this like, (laughs) 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 Yes. Yes, perhaps when it feeds on you, it will let me be so I can once again be reunited with Climbs. Drink of their blood, foul beast. Do what you will, but just return my love to me. Everybody roll a perception check. Okay. What did you get? Aldo. 27 for Aldo. Halster. 19. Bungleby. 17. Sir Julie. 30. Ooh! Sir Julie and Aldo will act in the surprise round. Oh, Oh, for God's sakes. Roll for initiative! 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 Here we go! We having fun, Portland? It's a little hot in here. Sweating in places I didn't know I could sweat. Yeah. Uh, All right, Aldo, what did you get, buddy? Uh, 19 on the old initiative. What about Sir Julie? 17. 17 for Sir Julie. Bungleby, 18. 18 for Bungleby. And finally, Halster Price. Six. (laughs) (laughs) The number of rats. Okay. (laughs) Six. Okay. Wow, this is gonna be, this is gonna be wild. Surprise round. One of my creatures will act. No. No. Along along with Aldo and Sir Julie. Where are they? Well, one of them is invisible. Oh. (gasps) Oh, shh. But you feel its presence as it comes towards Bungleby. No. No, what did I do? And let's see, am I close enough to yeah. Alright, so it can uh, it can do one attack and it is going to attempt to bite. It cannot move and attack on a surprise round. It didn't move. It's within range. Cause it's big. Oh, it's big. Here we go. Trying to bite ya. Ooh, bad roll against flat-footed 12. Miss. Nice. (laughs) Poop. (laughs) Poop. Aldo, you get to go. Aldo, not seeing any enemies at the moment. Well, I can tell you, towards the north, you do see this woman. Okay. Okay. Oh, she's got some distance. And uh, that's what she looks oh, like. Oh, we no. saw her. We've seen her. This oh, is yeah. astral projecting the bitch. Projection. Oh. <laughs> that was the projection. Yeah, now she looks oh, yeah. much more in the flesh. And her flesh is weird. Yeah, she's oh. got a tentacle growing out of her stomach. Yep, the old couple tentacles coming out of the stomach. This is Havisham ate an octopus. One really long arm. Yeah, something oh. happened. And she said that uh, her and her lover did something to her husband, but it left its taint on her, and then a couple people chuckled. Right. The uh, word taint. (laughs) She kind of looks like Bjork, doesn't she? No, doesn't. What are you rolling? I don't know. Aldo, what do you want to do? So you do see her. Let's keep away from me. Try to think. Stay away. Bjork looks like, and it's not quite like that. I don't don't remember the tentacles. But yeah, I'm gonna pop a an extract off of his bandolier. Okay. And drink quickly, drink it, and effectively casting shield on himself. Okay. There's some spooky Bjorks. That was horrible, Bjork. Sorry. Bjork, Bjork, Bjork. Uh, what about Sir Julie? Did I hear or sense or perceive in any way the attack that was made on Bumblebee? Uh, yeah, you felt a presence yeah. right next to you. He's like, something's trying to hit me! All right, can I, I will swing at that, that presence. That is a West 
Coast IPA. Uh, what? Pine needles. All right, show me what square. Show me what square you want to swing into. Where does he? Where does does he shout in, in fear? And Will you just pick a square? No. Well, where do I sense the presence? Um, ahead of you somewhere. I swing at the square where I sense the presence. Okay. You might have to move. I can't. Right. Power attack, furious focus. Power attack, furious focus. Natty 15 for a 26. Ooh, yes. You feel air as you slice through. So perhaps this creature has reach. So I didn't feel a presence in that square. Well, uh, you did, but it went away quickly as whatever it, it attacked Bumblebee with uh, slid back to its space. Oh, it moved on its surprise round. Didn't move. It's long. <laughs> Wait till you see it. You're going to love it. Round one. It's its turn. And I'm mad at you, so I'm going to bite you. <laughs> Actually, I'm going to do a full fucking attack on you. Oh, you, no, no. You've been a thorn in my side since the monologue. <laughs> <laughs> First Talon of three, 11. Miss. Second Talon. The fuck with these rolls? 12. Yeah. Miss. Third Talon. Okay. 22. That hits. There we oh. go. Boom sausage. That is going to be eight points of damage plus a little bleed on your turn. Yeah, big bleed crowd. Here comes the bite. This is the one I want to queue up with. You dirty paladin. Here we go. Natural two. Yeah! All right. No bite, but you do bleed on your turn. And let me see. That might be... Yeah, that might be real bad. Let me tell... Remind me when it's your turn that you get some bleed. I'll definitely do that. Be honest. <laughs> Hundo percent. Hundo P. Uh, Hundo all right. P. Now, uh, you, you feel all these attacks, but you still do not see the creature, so it does not become visible after an attack. What is going on with this crazy creature in Portland? Aldo's turn. Sorry, I got excited. Okay. I describe in great detail what I felt when I was struck with the town to Aldo. From yeah. what direction it came. It's right up there. How much reach it seemed to have. Okay. Aldo is going to, ha half listening to Sir Julie, he is going to produce the scroll of sea invisibility that we found earlier. Oh! Now, <laughs> as an alchemist, I, I do have to make a use magic device roll to effectively use the scroll, even though it is on my formulae list. So we'll see. Okay. I'm gonna try. Try. Uh, that okay? That is a natty 16. Oh, that's good. Uh, that is a 24. So assuming C invisibility is fourth level is a fourth level spell or lower, I am I succeed. That sounds good enough. So yeah, you can okay. see. Okay. <laughs> All right. So boom, the the scroll vanishes, and Aldo is able to see whatever it is that is. Uh, hiding itself there in the shadows. So what you can see that no one else can see is this. Oh, that's oh! really awful. Oh, wow. Mama. Why? Mama. No, no. Oh, it's and a collection that... of tentacles surrounding a bizarre sphincter. <laughs> Some the sort of uh, toothed sphincter. That, that tittering, laughing sound is coming from its fanged maw. Oh no! It's just a floating mass of talon-tipped tentacles. <laughs> Aldo immediately regrets casting a spell that allows him <laughs> to see this thing. Mama. Uh, so you see it, and I can tell you, but your friends don't know, that it's right schma, 10 okay. feet in front of Bunglebee, uh, just to the, uh, well, it's, yeah, it's 10 feet in front of Bunglebee. Okay. Aldo, using a free action, says, ah, it's right there! He points over towards the crate in the other side of the room. Okay. So at least you can see it. Oh, and question, this thing is just always... Uh, Greater invisibility. Will you wait to your right? turn to ask a question? Greater invisibility. Will you wait to your turn to ask greater, a question? 
Invisibility, right? Because if it's just invisible, it's it's visible. It's your turn. What's your question? Is it visible? No, it's not visible. He'll step up and attack. Uh, he'll take a five foot step and do a full attack action. Fifty percent miss chance. Square. You're gonna miss all attacks, guaranteed. Uh, dupe, dupe, guarantee. Dupe, dupe. Menomina. Here we go. First, first attack, natural one. There it is. Uh. This is what you pay to see. <laughs> To confirm. To confirm. Natural five. Five! <laughs> What's the totes my goats on that? While well, you quickly look up fumbles. Oh, it's uh, 13. Fumboni. You accidentally killed yourself. Uh, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? I'm going to uh, try to find one. That's local. From Portland. All right. Uh, A local Portland Fumboni. All right, I, I might have one. Uh, from Mailman Cody? Yeah! Hey! hey! Mailman hey! Cody, look at that guy! Mailman, mailman, ma Hey, you know what? Let's see if he delivers on this fumble. <laughs> <laughs> well, the name of the fumble is Miss Delivery. Oh! oh! Are you riffing with me, Cody? <laughs> your attack goes way off the mark, embarrassingly missing your target. Yeah. Entirely. <laughs> Worse yet, everyone saw this awful attack. <laughs> you find yourself trying to get your attack back on track and it puts you off balance. You become shaken for 1d4 rounds. A successful will save reduces the duration by half, minimum one round. Will save in... Coming, it is a 13 against the creature's AC. Obvious pass. So one <laughs> round. You failed, but I only rolled one round, so it's all right. So round. I'm shaking for one round. Okay. Awesome. Yeah. That's not so bad. And I hit on concealment, which I never will again. Next attack. Natural 20. Oh! Critical threat. Critical threat. Critical. Ladies and gentlemen, that's a 19 on concealment. But you recent. That's what I knew. That's I knew it was coming. But but you recently adopted the preferred 50% mischance selection where under 50 and lower hits. You're embarrassing. You're embarrassing yourself. Per Dell's rule in his game with the 6986. Oh, that's true. That's true. Math. That sounds like a crit to me. <laughs> <laughs> are you, uh, are you done your long turn yet? I'm done. Okay. It was fun. Thanks for giving that to everybody. Thank you, Cody. Sir, Sir Julie Andrews. Sir Julie will step, will five foot step. She will swift action lay on hands. Ooh. To end the bleed. Ah, uh, to end the the bleed. Not a great amount of healing, but the bleed is over. Bleed is over. Okay, but you take the bleed though first, right? Is yes. it beginning of your turn or end of your turn? Beginning of your turn. Right. Nice try, Sir Julie. Uh, you're gonna <laughs> Typical take. Typical lying paladin. <laughs> I'll tell you what you take in a second. What do you wanna do? Uh, full attack. Right, Power that. attack. Furious focus. <laughs> Etc. 50 or lower hits. <laughs> Calling it. No, it's not 50. Natural two. Okay. Second attempt. Okay, it's 51 or higher. Uh, it is a 20, but misses on the concealment. 81. Uh, 81 on the concealment. 81. Well, there, there, okay, we got to send this to a jury trial now because you said 50 and over, and I you said, said 50 I and said, under. I said under. I know, but like I, he contradicted you. I contradicted you. Um, well, if you read take it the back. Hit, well, then if you want to take the hit. I'm going to let it be a hit because 
it's it's got to be 51 or higher. It's got to be 51 or lower because the 86 is the worst possible result. All right. Mm. <laughs> so you take People, four, we could argue about this all night. Uh, you take four points of bleed, but no, give yourself a hit. I want it to count. Don't worry about the 86-69 rule. We're moving to a new game in two days. You think we're never going to roll a new one under again? <laughs> sorry, Del. Yeah, sorry, Del. <laughs> sorry, Del. Sorry, Del. Your logic is defeated. Uh, 20 points of damage. 20 points yeah. of damage! Nice, Julie! Back, foul beast. Okay, 20 points of damn Sony. Are you done with your turn? Yes. Okay. Let me just check my shit. Did you take four points of bleed? I did. Did you? Yes. Joe, look at his sheet. I'll show you the record if I can remember how to do that. Show okay. me the record. Four damage taken. Yeah, it's right there. He did it. I can't believe it. From the back of the room, the woman steps up. Don't look at me! And she, like, flies into a bestial rage and <laughs> fires... A couple magic missiles at oh. Aldo. Oh, okay. Aldo, you take a gentleman's 10 damage. Well, I would, had I not cast shield earlier. Oh! It specifically negates magic missile <laughs> and has as the dawn of time. <laughs> So proud of myself right now. Feel good? <laughs> Doesn't that feel good? Yeah, it does. Uh, all right, so those magic missiles just poing, poing, boom, bounce boom. off of your yeah, magical you see, shield. You see the impact like on this like circular shield that's invisible normally, but it's a boom, boom, like you can see it in that moment. And they it's, it looks really cool. Deflect onto Sir Julie, and Sir Julie <laughs> takes ten points of damage. That's fine. The angle with which they hit. I yeah. would, except I don't. <laughs> <laughs> and to round out the round. Halster Price! You see the symbol of Phrasma burn on the back of his neck, and a use of fervor expends itself to cast divine favor on himself. That is a swift action. You will move 30 feet behind Sir Julie. Ooh. Does Sir Julie have any strength modifying equipment on? I think he'd know what she'd be wearing. Does he want to rip it off? Strength modifying equipment, as in like a belt of giant strength Correct. or something like that? Uh, I do not believe so, but I'll check. Uh, no. if you, we'll assume that you don't. Halster will reach out to the small of your back again and cast <laughs> full strength. Oh. Nice. He gently caresses the butterfly tattoo <laughs> that rests above your ass crack. Warp what? Tour 96 was amazing. <laughs> One day I shall tell you the story of Warp Tour 96. Halster's like, who's Smash Mouth? <laughs> <laughs> Who is this Smash Mouth? Who is this Smash Mouth that you... <laughs> I'll tell you another time. <laughs> Round two. It is the creature's turn. You are no longer bleeding, you said? Nine. Okay. Okay, then. Um, it is going to do a full attack, and I really want these to hit, so I'm going to lie about my dice rolls. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you for being honest. Yeah. These are against flat-footed AC. I'm going to spread the wealth here. Uh, first attack is going to be against Sir Julie. Talon number one is a 20. Hit. Ooh. Against flat-footed. That if, is going to be... Some if only some of my dex damage had been healed. No. Five points of damage and you're bleeding. Uh, second attack is against Bungle B. Natural 20. Oh, no. Critical threat, critical threat, critical, critical, critical threat. To confirm. Against flat-footed 15. Miss. Oh, yes. Does not confirm. Oh, huge, huge. Crap sandwich. But you will take uh, six points of damage, and you're bleeding as well. And then the third talon... Uh, is going to be back at Sir Julie. And that is going to be a miss, I think, against flat-footed 13. Miss. Okay, and then the final bite. Really want to hit this bite. No. Coming after Come you. On, no, no. Friends. Coming after you. You don't like no. Matthew. No. We're not friends tonight. Natural 20 again. <laughs> oh, no. Critical threat, critical threat, critical, critical, critical threat. 
We'll be selling these dice in Seattle. They're called Split the Party, blue and white. And that beautiful planet dies right there in the old 20. Holy shit, could this be bad? All right, here we go. First to confirm. Here we go. Ooh, ooh, ooh. 12, fuck. All right. Yeah! It's fine, fine. Regular damage, oh man. Okay, nine points of damage. Exploding John. No, he attempts to grab you with the bite. And for fuck, this one, fuck, fuck, fuck. I shall roll neon green. Oh no. Troy's gonna roll. Troy's gonna roll. You're totally screwed. Natural one. Don't you dare. Natural one. Don't you dare. Natural one. Let me look at my shit here. What's his CM Bizzle? Read those stats. Here we go. Okay. Tweener. Against your CMD. I bet you I hit it by one. 21. Ah, that is a hit. That's, yeah. <laughs> By a lot. <laughs> <laughs> I see you're not, you're still not familiar with the Pathfinder role-playing game. No, no. <laughs> no, no, no. Uh, okay. Yet, a, yet again, a couple things are going to happen. First, I need you to make a will save. Oh, oh no. Shit, shit, shit. As it shit, attempts shit. to perform a loathsome embrace on you. Uh, all right, who gave me these die? Hey! hey! Thank you! Thanks, me! Was it Zach, is that it? Yes, yeah, Zach, thank you. I got gifted some die earlier tonight, and so this will determine if I like you or not. <laughs> That's fair. Did you hear that? Do it! Let's see if Zach <laughs> is a piece of shit. <laughs> oh! He sent a note that says, have you seen the yellow side? Oh, no! Ah. Zach, sure you want to roll this? You're creepy dude, Zach. All right. Here we go. Zach's die. Will save. Son of a bitch! Blow some... Fuck. <laughs> 15. DC 16. Oh! All right, so, oh man. As this thing takes you in its mouth, its suckered tendrils just pulling you towards its gaping maw, you become nauseated for one round. And also, because it has succeeded on its grapple, you take two points of con drain. Oh no! As Jeez. it is bleeding you out. Oh my Not God. unlike what it did to the rats downstairs. Oh, oh yeah. Now I see. And it heals itself as it sucks your blood. So, you, you must defeat it. <laughs> so, you, you must defeat it. I'm pissing myself. Um, <laughs> now, the good news is as it starts to suck your blood, it becomes visible. Okay. Oh. Okay. As your blood courses through its veins and gives it color. Thank you, yeah. Bungleby. So. Your sacrifice <laughs> will be rewarded. You're welcome. <laughs> You're grappled, and it's grappled. It, so is it like a floating mass of capillaries? Like we just see like the vein structure starting to yeah. appear? That's yeah. cool. Like yep. Dr. Manhattan. Yep. Yeah, yeah. It's Over the course of several days. Yeah. Pretty awesome. And it's Aldo's turn. Aldo, you just deftly deflected a couple magic missiles. Yeah, do do? Aldo sees this woman uh, whose image we've seen before. Uh, and I, I don't think, he probably doesn't know that this thing is now visible. Like he, he's been able to see it the whole time. So he keeps shouting, it's there, it's there! Target this explosion and fire! And he throws a bomb at the creature. Come on, get it! Natty 18 on the yeah! fucking door! Yeah! Woo! Uh, that is 15 points of fire damage. Ooh, yikes. And gonna... it is on fire. Oh! All right, uh, soon Bungleby will be on fire as well. All right, so that thing just screeches out this horrible scream 
It sounds like several voices overlapping. I was having somebody else. Actually, this would have been cool to do when it was still invisible because with the fire, maybe you would have been able to see it. You would have been able to see it, yeah. yeah. Uh, it's still pretty cool. Uh, and now it is Bungleby's turn. Bungleby, you're grappled and you're nauseated. Talk to me about nauseated. Uh, this is... I really identify with this because this is exactly how I have felt every time I donated blood. <laughs> I sat there and was just like, oh, God. Oh. And then just like all pale and was like, I think I'm going to throw up on you. I'm so sorry. So, yeah, he's like... Sir, we can't He's take not this actually blood. vomiting, but <laughs> he's just like cheese. trying to, to not vomit. And that takes all of the work uh, of his round. The only thing he can do is move, but he's grappled. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, it's up to you if I can do a skill check. Yeah, uh, you can do a skill check. All right, then I will do an escape artist oh. to try to get out of there. I don't know if that's a... What does the nauseated condition say? It says you can only move. Okay. Only take move actions or only move. He could loosen his limbs and like kind of slip his clavicle out of the grasp. You know, it all makes sense I th to me. The problem is, I think, when using a skill like escape artist counts as a standard action. Right? Yeah, so you well, can't do it. I think you could say you could vomit on yourself and that would lubricate your body so that you could extricate yourself from the creature. It says, it says you're unable to attack, cast spells, concentrate on spells, or do anything else requiring attention. The only action a character can take is a single move action per turn. And it, and, yeah, and yeah. per the escape artist, escape artist sex, escaping from a grapple or a pin is a standard act. Thank you for wasting everyone's so time. So he just stays there, and it's just like, oh, I hope this is over soon. <laughs> Will it be, Sir Julie? Give me your bleed damage. Give you what? My bleed damage. Your bleed damage. Ooh, yeah. Oh, you take some bleed damage, too. Sir Julie takes one, and you take one. Nice. Poop. That wasn't so bad. All right. Poop. Caressed on her lower back by Halster. We'll talk about that later. Uh-huh. Uh, Sir Julie feels the strength of a bull flowing through her. Yeah. And she will smite evil. Yes. Oh! Nice. Swift action. Nice. Swift action. Is the creature evil? Um, I'm committing to it. and now you. That's fair. Uh, yes. Seems Second pretty evil. follow up question. Chaotic evil, in fact. Is the creature an outsider with the evil subtype, an evil line dragon, or an undead creature? No. It's not an outsider? No. It's probably an aberration. All right. Uh, All right, well, then I don't get to double my damage, but it's still pretty sweet. Okay. Um, As you swing, do you say, Somebody once, once told me the, the world is gonna roll me. I ain't the sharpest tool in the shed. <laughs> Roll to hit. 28 to hit. 28 oh, yeah. to hit? Well, with its AC lowered by the grapple. That is a hit. Okay, that is 28 points of damage. Holy Whoa, shit! Baby! Is that slashing, damn Zony? It is indeed. Magical. Magical slashing. Okay. Magical. Very good, very right. good. Uh, is that your round? No. Second attack. Shit. Uh, 25 to hit. Yes! Oh, dear. Yeah. Finish it. Max damage. Yes! Yes! <laughs> Boxcars, bro. Boxcars. Boxcars. 34 points of damage. Oh, my yes! God. Yes! Fucking dead. Fucking dead. Describe your kill. Yes! <laughs> So I imagine the first the first strike, there's just all of this mass of tentacles like slapping at her, and she's kind of like dodging, and she just hacks off a couple of them, and then she sees its gaping maw sucking the life out of Bungleby, and she just drives the great sword right above its mouth. Yes. And impales the thing. And this creature from faraway worlds dies. Nice. Yes. Nice. Get out of our world, weirdo. Get out of my world! Get out of my world, baby! <laughs> it's burning Hulk. The falls shuddering to the ground. The woman still suckling on Bungleby. Yeah, it's just burning yeah. as it falls. Uh, Bungleby's blood leaking out of it onto the floor. <laughs> the woman to the north moves within ten feet of Aldo, 
And as she does, her arm starts to get weirdly long. Oh, no. It gets weirdly long and starts to glow with electricity as she attempts to shocking grasp Aldo from 10 feet away with her weird long arm. Let's do a melee touch, John. Aldo's got a really high touch AC, right? No, it's not that great. Uh, 16. Uh, that's a hit. Uh, okay, that is going to be 1d6 per caster oh, level boy. for those of you following along at home later. <laughs> Why eight, not for them? Eight points of electricity damage. Okay. Oh, look at me! And it is Halster's turn. One enemy left that you can see. For poisoning your husband, I curse you, Namira. I curse you. And his ugly chainmail curses her. Oh. Standard action. How dare you? Minus two penalty to AC attack rolls. Oh, or on saving rolls. Uh, so let's make uh, her easier to hit. Uh, minus two penalty to armor class. Minus two penalty to nice. AC? AC. Nice. Okay. Rude. She's, she's been through enough. Round three. The star vampire is dead. Uh, big Cthulian monster. Star, he's a star vampire. The he's a star <laughs> vampire. <laughs> waiting in the sky. We have waiting of, in the attic. We have a lot He'd of fun like to drink your blood. <laughs> Aldo, you're up. He's a star. <laughs> We're having a good time. We really are. All right. <laughs> Whose turn is it? Aldo Casimir. Aldo. Aldo. Uh, all right. So he's like, gets this black, like, burn mark on his arm from where she slapped him with a spell. And she says, yeah, good news, love. We won't be looking at you much longer. Tosses <laughs> another bomb. <laughs> Boom. Her face. No. By the way, sorry, I don't have any candy tonight. Boom! Uh, no, I, I have a good excuse. Because I forgot. <laughs> so, I will, though, if you... Is anyone coming to the Seattle show also? All right. If you come and uh, present your ticket from this show, you'll get a free thing of candy. Why don't you throw some dice? Uh, all right. Natural 19! Oh! Oh! Aldo on fire! Literally. Gross. Uh, that, do, 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 do. that is 14 points of fire damage, and she is on fire. Crap. 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 Salad. Crap. Cuts through the D-Rizzle, and she is on God damn it. God damn it. fire. <laughs> I just love the idea of DR being called Drizzle. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, she got some drizzle. Dude, that's how drizzle. you're... That's how your parents would read it. What's drizzle? <laughs> Mom, that's D Rizzle. <laughs> All right, there she is. Oh, there's a little fire behind her. Awesome. How about a little fire, Scarecrow? Yeah. Days of stop. All right, this it is, is a very interesting situation. <laughs> <laughs> Bungleby Luna, its uh, awful tentacles release you, its mouth. The suction just oh. slaps off of you as it falls to the ground, burning from Aldo's bomb. You feel a little lighter after giving blood. Would you like a Lorna Dune? He <laughs> feels so sick, but he's, he's, he's getting over it. <laughs> the shaking is gone. Yep. The nausea is gone. Gone, Zony. The grappled is gone. Gone. His bonuses are back to full. And he will delay. <laughs> a little bit of everything tonight. I need Sir Julie to get up there, and then I'll go to flank that shit. Sir Julie, you're up, and because I'm stupid, you're five feet away from a full attack. Yeah. <laughs> I thought you were just giving me a gift. I would never give you a gift. I thought in the spirit of Christmas. Five foot step. 149 days away from Hallmark movie starting. <laughs> First attack with the great sword. Power attack, furious focus, etc. 19. 19 to hit. Her AC has been lowered by this douchebag. <laughs> making Deuces. it exactly a fucking 19. Yeah! Yeah! And the bull strength. Team working. What? 
Nothing in Memphis. 25 points of damage. Oh. 25 points oh. of damage. Not all of it gets through. <laughs> Don't but blame me. My, my strike got a little drizzle on. It had a little drizzle. <laughs> drizzle, a little de-rizzle on that strike. Joe, would you like to do the honors? No, no, no. Natural 20! Oh! Critical crack, critical crack, critical God, she's crack. such a beast. Critical this is crack. so awesome. This is so fucking perfect. Uh, this is why I want to touch the small of your back. <laughs> Does not confirm. Matthew or Sir Julie? Find out later. A little bit of a column A, a little column B. Does not confirm, 15 to confirm. 15 to confirm. But exploding dice? Does it get? Was it a nat 20? Yeah. All right. No explosion. Uh, it is, that's 24 points of damage. Not. All of that gets through. And now you're right next to her. And it's her turn. Uh, Bungleby uh, Luna is going to go. You piece of shit. <laughs> Yes. Uh, fuck. He's Eat. not gonna. Mm, mm, come on, come on. Mm, 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 mm. Uh, Time's up. Yeah. Shit. What do you want he's to do? He's just. He's literally five feet away from being able to flank, but he can't. So uh, he's just gonna move uh, up here and okay. attack once. Move here up, attack go. once. Okay. You You're attack. standing on a box. He he jumps on a box. Okay. Uh, unless you're telling me I can't. That's fine. fine. You're telling okay. me. Uh, at natural 20. Oh, oh my God. <laughs> critical crack. Critical crack. Critical crack. Critical, critical crack. I'm confirming this shit. I swear this to God. Is I'm unbelievable. confirming this shit. Come on, Portland. I can feel it coming. Oh, it's gonna be a fan critical. Oh yeah, fans. <laughs> fan critical. Let's get a Portland critical. Oh god, I'm gonna have a heart attack. Is Skyler here? Hear that orgasmic? No, oh, that's me. Oh. <laughs> can I? Can I I'm make here. A, Can I make a request that if you're ever here for a fan critical again, when you acknowledge, you just say, uh, "Beef." No oh, beef. <laughs> oh beef. The beef. <laughs> the dude of the beef. <laughs> the dude of the beef. What did Skyla say? Skyla said, "Extra planer crank zoni." Oh. <laughs> You hit your target with such vicious might that you send them traveling through space, time, and a random plane. Yeah. Wait. Yeah. What? Yeah. What? What? Yeah. Uh, so all it is is uh, it's it's a lot of flavor, but um, so double damage plus one d6 energy damage, oh, okay. which will cut through dr, which is nice. Yeah. yeah. And then you roll randomly to determine the type of energy by which plane she went through. In that brief moment. That's so, kind of fun. Okay. Very fun, Skyla. Oh, nice be work. Be Thank you, Skyla. Shit. Um, max damage. Oh, wow. Which isn't much. Which isn't much. Okay. It's 18. 18 points of damage. Okay. Not all uh, that cut through. Well, some of that's energy. Plus, uh, let's see what the random energy is. It's going to be uh, wa wa water damage. I guess oh. ice damage. The, if she the... was a house, she'd be fucked. Right. <laughs> the resale damage just plummet. Usually, water damage doesn't affect the attic. Through the plane of water, and she takes four points of energy damage on top. Awesome. Uh, so twenty-two from old Bungleby oh. with a dagger. You guys did it! You got me the Natty 18! All right. He'll break Finish. your heart. Finish He'll break this. your heart. Don't get too excited. Wait, you forgot to tell me to describe my kill. <laughs> it is Sir Julie's turn. No, it's not. 
It's her turn. Oh, that's right. Oh, wait, I mean, yes, it's Sir, it's Sir Julie's, Julie's turn. It's Sir Julie's turn. <laughs> I'm so she stupid. She takes a five foot... Actually, she takes burn damage here. Well, I... Now, because she passed through the plane of water... <laughs> I, You're a good I, man, Skidmore. I would argue that the fire would be extinguished in that. You know in what? That, in that, uh, That's worth the bottle cap. Yeah. Hey. That's just playing the game. It was the way it was meant to be played. To play Wait, it, play it real. Did she end her garments? Pass through the plane of water. Did she what? She, did her end her garments? Pass through the plane of water. No, she nakedly moved through the plane of water. And then was shunted back. Well, to I don't her know clothing. when the last time you traveled between planes was, but unless you take great care, you go through naked. I've seen the Terminator movies. Chunk, 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 chunk. It's her turn. <laughs> she takes a step back and she starts crouching down and she's like, My baby boy, my baby boy, where have you gone, my baby boy? And as she says that, she starts to fucking grow. And as she grows, the floor begins creaking under her weight. Oh, no. And you feel the floor start to shift under you like it's going to collapse. And it is Halster Price's turn with a family of rats living in his anus. <laughs> I gotta put a roof over those rats and I'm gonna feed all of them. And I'm gonna do it right now by stepping up to the plate and swinging for home, Troy! Yeah, you're a good dad, you're a good dad! She big. Oh, uh, swift action before I step up. I'm going to use, uh, I'm reduced on my uh, fervor for the day by having that negative level, but I use one of my last ones in order to cast bull strength on myself. I don't need your life story. All right, here it comes. That is a 16 to hit. Oh, okay. no. Now, her AC did go down, and you did give her a curse. Where's the curse over? Curse still gone. It's a minute. Not it's a hit. still not enough. Not it's a hit. She's Very close. 17. Very close. Large, behind two. Yeah, no. Minus four to dex. No, no. Shit! So sorry. I'm so sorry. I'm not that sorry. It is a new round. We'll call it round four. Might be round five. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> but it's Aldo's turn. Aldo, what do you know? Aldo is going to take a five foot step back and away from her. Okay. And he is going to toss another bomb in her direction. Uh, over Hollister's head. That fire damage cutting through DR if you can hit. Uh, that is a 12 against touch, AC. She big. With she the big. curse and with the big, that is a hit. Yes! Yeah! Yeah! Walking in Memphis, baby. Uh, that is 13 points of fire damage, and she is on fire again. Well, that fire will go out pretty quickly because she's dead. Yeah! Aldo, baby! Kaboom! Cause I was walking in Memphis. Walking in Memphis. Memphis. Jesus, stop. Fireball! All right. You are out of combat. Oh. Her enormous body falls to the ground burning as it does so, and as the lights go out, her body shrinks back to its normal size, and the floorboards creak no more. Oh, you wanted those floorboards to break so oh, bad. Man. It was really just to scare you. Oh. Bing. You look around the room. Seems like she was taking care of these potted plants, projecting herself around town, attacking you in the town square. <laughs> attacking you <laughs> right after you met Ichabod Douche Nozzle. <laughs> what do you give her a perception check? Ugh. 24. 18. <laughs> Natural 20. Oh! <laughs> All right, so I imagine you're going about this room searching it thoroughly. Yes. 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 Okay. Those of you the rolled, plants with her blood. <laughs> those of you who rolled a high enough perception find uh, in one of the plants, with maybe your natural 20 there, Bungleby, you find uh, hidden in one of the plants, like in the dirt, a folding leather pouch. And inside of the pouch is a finely cut emerald worth a thousand Gs. Wow. Ooh. Nice. Ooh. A silver necklace set with garnets worth 400 
G's. Nice. nice. A pair of black pearl earrings worth 150 G's. Ooh. Damn, racking it up. A gold ring set with a large diamond worth 2,500. Whoa. Wow. 13 freshwater pearls worth 10 gold pieces each. A jade comb worth 100 gold pieces. I don't think there are freshwater pearls. And a silver and amber bracelet worth 120 gold pieces. Why would you lie about the water the pearls came from? <laughs> know, it seems wait, so petty. A... That's why they're worth so much. Oh, okay. They're the only 13 in existence. <laughs> okay. They appreciated that response. And so you go about searching this room, looking through the boxes, trying to find out what's going on here. You know, her, her monologue to you revealed a little bit of her, her sad tale. You had obviously fought the ghost, the, I think it was a revenant or something, of Climes Pret, who was barricaded in the dungeon below the fort, Fort Hale Course. And so now you see what happened. She was fooling around on the side with this guy. She really loved him. The Count found out about it was going to kill him. They poisoned him with some ritual and it transformed her. So all the time uh, the city thought that she died of the same wasting disease that her husband did. But it appears that Laos knew that she was just living up in the attic. Yeah. And he, he lied stuck about his mother it. up in the attic. Yeah. Yep. Something strange happens though because as you start to look about and dig into all of these things you're looking around at everyone in the room, and Aldo, Halster, and Sir Julie eventually realize that Bungleby is gone. What the fuck? You go out to the hallway, look down the stairs. Gone, Zony. We don't even feel a, smell a faint trail of shit? You do, but you don't see him. He's gone while his smell lingers. <laughs> but it appears you have done everything here at Iris Hill and you have all the information you need to follow the count. If you go downstairs and start to look about, Bungleby is nowhere to be found. How much time do you spend looking for him? If any. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so many crowd just goes, zero. <laughs> uh, 14, 15 minutes. Yeah. All right, you look about. I think that's a fair amount of time. To, I think at that um, point, we could be like, you know what? <laughs> eh. It's just really worth it. Yeah. <laughs> he can <laughs> never <laughs> flank. <laughs> He never gets there. Yeah. We're really looking, though, for those 14 Oh, months. no, we're yeah, looking we, intensely. We, yeah. we take it seriously. Yeah. You, uh, you look around, and you start to notice a couple things. You notice that Big P is gone as well. And several of the objets d'art that were laying about the mansion oh. are gone. You little well. sneak. You little... He's on his way to donate them to the museum. Yes. <laughs> She's so innocent. He wanted to leave early to be there when the museum opened. Yeah. Exactly. <laughs> museum of Stolen Goods for the Enrichment of Bigby. <laughs> Bungleby. So, maybe from there we then uh, cut to a scene of Aldo and Halster and Sir Julie uh, pushing a wheelbarrow with Atticus in it. <laughs> Frozen in amber. Ups, upside down, though. Upside down. <laughs> Awkward. Uh, just pushing it, heading back in the direction of town. Uh, he wouldn't want to alarm the townsfolk to see the look of horror on his face. <laughs> so, a, we just, so we just stick a mass up. <laughs> it's a rickety wheelbarrow, too. It's right. really hard to a keep going. A lot of bumps. Yeah. And you head back to the sleepless detective agency, agency, and Winter is there, and will say that she has already caught uh, Cecilia up on everything that she knew. But you're able to give her the full picture of things. And you, you gotta think, the Count's gone, 
Melisande's dead. The magistrate's dead. The royal accuser is dead. So Sadia may be the only one that can kind of take control of this, and she's respected in town. Is she going to become the next man? You don't know, but like, <laughs> this is the person you want to talk to. All the government officials are gone, so let's name this private investigator. <laughs> the administrator for the town. <laughs> it's in the town charter. It's, a, it's one of the stipulations. Forget it's Asadia. It's Thrushmore. <laughs> <laughs> She's relieved to see you. And uh, as my you... My private investigator, my mayor, my private investigator, my ah, mayor. Ah, ah. <laughs> She's relieved to see you and, and even more relieved that the troubles in Thrushmore are probably coming to an end now that you've uh, eliminated the cult and Millie Sen. Where so, did we start this? Did we start it online? Yeah, we did that two-day marathon. Yeah. In 2020, right? Yeah, well, like, we did all of COVID. part. We did all of part one, in that. Uh, and you met Cecilia, and she was like, "Get out of here, you low lights!" <laughs> uh, and so she apologizes again for that. She's like, "I see that you're, you're good people. I see I, you're legit." All the all the cultists are gone, so we've drove, driven the Irish out. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Irish. No more druids and no more Irish <laughs> in our town. <laughs> You catch her up on everything. <laughs> and, the, and the nuts and bolts of it are going to be very important to you. So you tell it to her. You're like, it appears the Count has arranged for a journey to Casimir, planning to meet up with his old friend, Myacnian Mun, to translate and research the Necronomicon. The Count is then evidently planning to travel even further south to find the lost city of Neruzavan for some unknown purpose. And perhaps you tell her that the final stages of Count's, uh, the Count's research took place through dreaming and that an occult ritual sent him and Aldo, Atticus, Hauser, all those people into the dreamlands to speak with a figure known as the Mad Poet, which is why you can't remember your past. So Cecilia listens to everything you say hanging on your every word, mouth agape. And the moment you finish, she says, my word. So, you need to get to Casimir. Yes. And she thinks, she's like, that's, that's over a thousand miles away. But perhaps I can, yes, perhaps I can be an aid, of an aid to your journey. And she starts looking through papers. I could ar arrange passage for you. I mean, it's, it's going to take months to get there. You'll need to take a ship. You'll need to take a ship, but most of the vessels that dock in Thrushmore are coal barges coming up from the Danver or, or simple fishing boats. You're going to need something larger to travel that great a distance and, and to do it quickly to stay on the Count's trail. Yes, there is a ship. And she looks and she's like, there's a fucking ship. Called. She pulls shit. out the adventure path book. Yes. Like, yeah, she, pull, so she pulls like, out the it script. It's written down right oh, here. There's a picture yeah. of me in this. No wonder she's <laughs> such a good investigator. <laughs> yeah, she's like, there's a ship called the Selen Starling. She's helmed by a feisty halfling named Skywind Freeling. <laughs> and she's set to arrive within the week. I will arrange for lodging for you here in Thrushmore as a small token of thanks for all that you've done for our town until the Selen Starling comes to port. After that, it's a fucking river adventure. Yeah! Oh, yes! We're back, baby! And you all level up to yes! seven! Oh, yes! hey! And that's the seven. end of book two! Yeah! About an epilogue. Yeah. They're all cheering. Atticus frozen still in amber. <laughs> Not knowing that he's now seventh level, but knowing that he still has the plague. And we're all on it immediately when he comes out of that. From there, we cut to a room where we see Big P. 
pulling things off the walls, throwing them into a sack that's overflowing with the Count's shit. And then we see Bumblebee, maybe, pass by the doorway looking, and you see Big P. What are you saying? He comes down in like a rush, and like runs his fingers through his hair, and he's like, Harding, have you gotten everything from down here? Big B is startled. He's like, for God's sake, Falco. You scared the shit out of me. Where are the others? They're in the attic. Now's our time. Okay. Come. Perfect. I, I have everything here. Just grab a bag and let's get the fuck out of here. No, 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 no. There's one more. One more thing. Come with me. But we don't have time. They could come down here any minute. Let's just, let's just go. They're so busy looking for crates up there in the attic. It's going to take them hours. Downstairs, there's something you must see. He listens to see if Atticus Aldo and Sir Julie have realized that they're doing this shit. And he's like, all right, fine, fine, lead the way. Go, go, go. Don't be so paranoid. We have time. And he leads them downstairs to the room where we found Winter. Where the star still lay. Where the star still lay. The last one. And he walks up. And just says, there, there it is. And Harding, not Big P, looks at Falco, not Bungleby, and says, what? It's, it's worth more than you can possibly imagine. What do you mean, this, this? This monolith? We can't carry this out of there, out of here? Oh, Harding, my dear. We won't need to. Look. He's, and he doesn't take his eye off the obelisk. Look at the walls. And he's pointing to like the masked figures in the clouds with the city buildings and everything on the side. Wait, is this, is this from that, that painting that we found that you refuse to sell? You have a good memory, my dear. Well, you were a fool then and you're a fool now. It's, I don't know what you're doing, but we can't take this. Let's just get out of here. And as Harding turns around to leave, Falco Ward, with a glaze over his eyes, turns, grabs him by the back of his hair, and slits his throat. Oh my god! (laughs) Just coughing blood coming out between his fingers. He's sputtering and he's looking at you in shock. And Falco's looking at him like he barely knows him. And then he kneels down and presses his hands into the blood that's pooling on the floor. Looks at the blood and turns back to the obelisk and starts smearing it down the obelisk. And just says, Thy will be done, my master. (laughs) I'm coming home. And as the blood drips down the stela, it starts to glow with an otherworldly light, a glow that envelops Falco Ward, formerly known as Bungleby Luna, as he steps through to the other side. (laughs) And we'll see you in Seattle.